Hey there friends, welcome back to our channel. Today we'll be delving into the world of guitar accessories and I'll be showing you 10 of the essential worship guitar accessories. Now these are tools that are not only there to make your life easier, but ultimately to even help you create a better sound. Now let's jump right in. First up, we have a tuner. And it's really important to remember that no matter how good of a player you are or how amazing your gear is, if it's out of tune, is going to be kind of worthless at the end of the day and it can really undermine your entire performance. You know, in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1, it talks about if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love for others, growing out of God's love for me, then I've become only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, just an annoying distraction. And much like that in a similar way, if your playing is out of tune, and it can quite easily become an annoying distraction. Now, my personal preference is this clip-on tuner from TC Electronics. They've got a Unitune and a Polytune, and I just like it because I can clip it onto my headstock over here, and then it's gonna make for some silent tuning. And it's really important that you find a tuner that works best for you. Now, when I play with my Kemper Profiler, that has a built-in tuner with that strobe tuner, which I know is like super accurate, but for whatever reason, that way of tuning just never really sat well with me. The Helix also has a tuner, but I haven't used it enough. This is something that I know if I tune it, it's gonna be perfectly in tune because of the way and the experience that I have with this tuner. Now, of course, you can have a tune on your pedal board as well. I tend to be not a fan of those because this is the extra thing on your board. So that's why I like the resonance here on the headstock. Now, there's a super weird exercise that you can do if you want to. You need to get someone else to hold the guitar for you and they're gonna be playing a chord or two. But what you have to do is you have to close your ears like this and then bite onto the headstock right there where I'm clipping my tuner on. And then as you bite on it and you close your ears, ask the other person to strum, gently strum a few nice chords for you. Then you're gonna hear that resonance, it's gonna like be kind of overpowering, but that just shows you how much resonance there is within a guitar headstock and with the physics of the guitar. So I guess that's one of the other reasons why I like the tuner on the headstock there, because I know it's gonna get a solid signal, I can tune and it works for me. Just make sure that you have batteries and extra batteries should you need to replace these. They tend to last forever, but I have had to replace mine a couple of times. So that's it for the tuner. Super important for you to be in tune. Now, next up we have picks. Picks is really the main link between your fingers and your guitar. And that's why you need to find a pick that's very comfortable for you. One that feels natural, and it's gonna allow you to play with freedom, with control, and with accuracy. Now, I'm a big fan of these Jazz 3 type picks. I've got a bunch of these are made by Jim Dunlop, and I think the material that it's made of is called Altex. And I've got a whole box of them handy here, so just making sure that I never run out of picks. And I even put some of them in other places like my wallet, in case I leave my pick box at home or whatever the case may be, I'll always have a pick handy. However, when I'm playing acoustic guitar and I'm aiming for more of a softer, kind of a strummy tone, then I tend to prefer a softer pick like a red shark fin. And I've got a couple of those as well. Uh, back when I did sessions, I used to have a range of different picks and then the, the studio engineer or the producer when I was playing, I could test out different picks and they could kind of see, you know, which one that they prefer. But at the end of the day, you need to get a pick that you are super comfortable with. Now next up, let's talk about cables. You see your cable is that vital connection between your guitar and your amp or your modeler and your pedal board, whatever the case may be. And it's really essential to invest in a good cable. My go-to uh, choice when it comes to cables are these Mogami cables with these Neutrix connectors for a couple of reasons. It's both quality as well as durability and the sound quality of these. Now, Mogami is known as the cable of the pros for a reason. You know, there's many famous artists that end up playing for thousands and hundreds of thousands of people and they use Mogami um, as the cable of choice. Now, Mogami cables are claimed for their accuracy, 
uh, the low noise, the flexibility, and of course, the superior quality. I've had these for a number of years and they just keep on working. It's always a good idea to make sure that you have a backup cable as well, because you don't want to be stranded without a cable should something happen to your main cable, maybe it gets lost, maybe it gets broken, whatever the case may be, you always just want to be able to plug and play. Now onto the strap now. You know, this is uh, more important than you might initially think because the right strap is going to make sure that your guitar fits nice and comfortably. It's going to be at the right height and it's going to allow you to play and perform with ease. Now I use one of these high quality, I think it's Levi's, um, leather straps and it's really going to make sure that my guitar is always nice and comfortable and it's always going to be at the perfect height whether i'm sitting or standing that's a big tip for practicing because you want your guitar to always be at that same height so that your muscle memory can really kick in and that you can be comfortable and that you know when you grab the guitar when you rest your hand on the guitar it's going to be at just the right height now every guitar is going to need a resting place and that's where a reliable stand comes into play your stand needs to be sturdy and secure, so make sure you invest in one that you can trust to keep your guitar safe and sturdy. Now, depending on what's happening at your church, you might wanna have a, a small stand like this that you can go in and just close up, put it in your bag, but still make sure that it's a safe and sturdy stand that you can use um, when you don't have your guitar in your hands. You might have to put it down in between the sound check and actual service, but you wanna make sure that it's solid lease on a stand. Maybe you're lucky enough that the church already has some stands and then you can just use those on a Sunday. Now, many years ago, um, I went to a worship service and there was um, an Italian guitar player um, that I met there for the first time, he ended up becoming a good friend of mine, but he had a porridge smith that was um, put in like a tiny little stand. It had like these little uh, places for the guitar just to stand on like it, almost like a little stand like this. Obviously, he must have used it for the ease of transport, for touring and all those kind of things. And after the service, I went up to him and I said, hey man, um, that's an interesting looking stand. Doesn't the guitar ever fall over? And he replied in his Italian accent, he said, the stand, no, the guitar, yes. So obviously, you don't wanna have something like that where the stand is gonna stay standing, but the guitar could fall over. You wanna have something where if you've got an expensive guitar or even just a normal guitar, you don't want that to fall over because it can, it, things can break, go out of tune, whatever the case may be. And that's why a solid guitar stand is really an essential accessory for your guitar playing. Now, next one, I decided to combine these, which is a multi-tool or a string cutter. Sometimes you get them combined into one device. And you know, the reason that you need these, sometimes um, a quick fix might be required. You either need to open up a pedal or tighten something on your guitar or whatever the case may be. And it's nice to have multiple of these different um, tools available so that you can go ahead and you know do what you need to do to save the day. So having one on hand will make sure it's easy to make some adjustments on the fly. And then don't forget about your string cutter. That's another super handy piece when you need to uh, cut off excess pieces of strings after you've um, restrung your guitar. And then of course these Planet Waves string cutters, they also come with a string winder that you can use to wind your strings a lot faster. Now I don't need that on my PRS with the way that it's set up, uh, but when I restring my Strat or any of my acoustics, then these string winders tend to save a lot of time. Now if your church uses in-ears, a quality pair of in-ears is definitely a must have. Now while you could spend a lot of money on these in-ears, I personally recommend the Shure 215s. They provide a lot of comfort, and they have a decent frequency range and it's really pointless to invest in high quality guitars and gear and ultimately your sound quality is going to be compromised through subpar in-ears. Um, that's why I like to have at least a decent pair of in-ears. These are not um, amazing when you look at the um, a lot of money that you can spend on really top quality brands but they definitely do the job. And while I haven't used them myself I know that a lot of people also rave about the KZ brand. So it's nice just to have in-ears but at least give you a decent sound of your guitar. You can hear the other instruments, you can hear the metronome, the MD, the click, all those kind of things. Um, so my tool of choice at this point is Shure 215s. They don't cost an arm and a leg, 
but they get the job done. Now let's talk about the capo. Now contrary to popular opinion, the capo is far from being a crutch. It's gonna allow you to hit some open ringing strings in different keys, which really expands your overall tonal possibilities that you have at your disposal. It's really an easy way to add some richness to your guitar sound. And one of my favorite guitar players, Phil Kigi, he's a master when it comes to using capos. And he actually takes it to a whole new level by using multiple capos at the same time with alternate tunings to create some amazing playing. So definitely make sure you go ahead and check it out when you get a chance. Now next on my list is an iPad. Now the iPad is my go-to for my charts, for my scheduling and the overall organization of my playing and everything. So it's definitely not an absolute necessity, but having an iPad really simplifies things a lot for you and can help you to make your life a lot easier. And if I learn songs for a Sunday, I can take the pen, I can make notes and annotations on the actual chart. And even when we are coming up with new lessons here for the channel, the iPad is in constant use. Now apps like Multitracks and Playback and Chart Builder, these are also great to use. And then finally, if you ever decide to join our academy at worshipguitarskills.com, we also have an app where you can access our entire worship guitar curriculum, our science size powered videos, and you can chat with myself and others in the forum. So if you wanna learn more about our academy, you can go ahead and find out more by visiting worshipguitarskills.com. And finally, don't forget to carry any extra strings and a string cleaner. You see, having these on hand means you'll always be prepared for the unexpected. And I've found that when you have backup strings, you tend not to need them because uh, you know that might be due to Murphy's Law or whatever the case may be, but having extra strings at hand is never a bad idea. My preferred strings are these Elixirs. Um, the 10 to 46 gauge is what I use. I've used it for, for many, many years, probably close to 20 years now. So I know what my strings feel like. I know the resistance they're gonna give me when I bend. I know how hard I can play before they start breaking. And that's why it's great to have um, some extra strings. And also not a bad idea once you finish playing, just to give your guitar a wipe, get rid of some of that excess skin and sweat and whatever the case may be, that helps to keep your guitar in top shape. And now for a quick bonus, which is the Ebo. Now, while this is not essential, this can really add an intriguing edge to your sound. Now, for those of you who might be unfamiliar with an Ebo, it's really just this tool that creates a magnetic field that can cause your strings to vibrate endlessly. And that's gonna really give you a unique tonal experience because you can trigger some harmonics and you can just have that endless sustain on your guitar, which can serve as a cool creative outlet, adding something different to your playing. So here's a quick demo of the Evo. have it that wraps up our top 10 essential worship guitar accessories now just remember that these tools are there they are specifically designed to assist you and you have to find what works best for you but at the end of the day make sure that you are always prepared so thanks so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and if you've ever felt that despite your gear and your hard practice your worship guitar tone just isn't clicking, go ahead and watch this video right here. In this video, what we're doing is we're tackling the five common mistakes that might be ruining your guitar tone in worship settings. And not only will we identify these problems, but I'll also go ahead and provide some easy solutions to help you transform your worship guitar tone in a drastic way. I'll see you there in a sec.